It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. Welcome into another edition of the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. And this edition is a little more special because we are right on the cusp of getting Cal Poly Athletics back for the first time since early March. And joining me on this uh, Thanksgiving edition, I guess, if you want to call it that, it is the Director of Athletics at Cal Poly, Don Oberhelman, joining us live from the beautiful new Dignity Health Baseball Clubhouse uh, at Baggett Stadium. Don, thanks so much for taking some time out of your schedule to join us. You, you look great. I, I love those CP pins. Those are my favorite pins out there. And man, I can't wait to dress up again here really soon. We, we're, we're getting our sports back next week. Well, I, I was actually laughing today. This is the first time I've worn a sport coat, and I can't tell you how many months, so... Um, usually I would call it restrictive and not my favorite thing. It feels pretty good right now. Um, hopefully trying to get back in the swing of some things. So, uh, thanks for having me, Chris, first off, but, um, I mean, we, we've been pretty well engaged for many, many months throughout this, just on limited bases in terms of what we're allowed to do by San Luis Obispo County, uh, state of California, other, you know, we're governed by a lot of different entities, our conferences as well. So, um, but it really is starting to feel a little bit different because we really are on the cusp of actually getting to play, you know, a game against somebody not wearing the same color jersey as ourselves, not scrimmaging an actual game. So uh, I think we're, I think our students are fired up. Uh, scheduling has been such a nightmare in a lot of ways during this time. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, a lot of fans don't realize how in advance, especially in sports like football and basketball, you put together schedules and. I know that we've known for a while now that we weren't going to have a fall football season, but you guys had a trip to Louisiana. You had a trip up to Cal for the first time there. We've seen some very interesting last minute scheduling stuff across college football as, as a lot of FBS teams, just about every FBS team has wound up playing this fall. I think the, the most unique one I can think of off the top of my head was UCLA and Cal playing each other on a Sunday morning last weekend so uh men's basketball women's basketball is supposed to get underway here w within the next week or so men's basketball had a trip up to portland that was planned uh they had to pull the plug on that with some of the new regulations coming into play here in california within the last uh, couple of weeks i know women's basketball they've had some of the games on their schedule already fall through and, and have to try and replace those so I know that that's oftentimes up to the coaching staffs, but as you try and schedule and plan here for uh, what will be a very interesting 2021 athletic year, what are some of the challenges uh, you faced with, with some of the new regulations that have been put into place the last couple of weeks? Well, a lot of it's been uh, really just about travel as much as anything else in terms of where we might be able to go. So I think everybody was aware that the governor issued a travel advisory about um, uh, quarantining for 14 days after you go out of state. And uh, there was some real uncertainty for about 24 hours about exactly what that meant. Uh, is this a requirement? It's called an advisory. Uh, not too sure who has to follow it, what the definition of required travel is. I mean, there's a lot of questions. Um, come to find out, we may have been able to go to Portland after all, had we really pushed it. Um, we kind of arrived at the decision that, you know, maybe it's okay that we don't get to go. I think we were all honestly a little bit skeptical that that event was going to get to go uh, anyway. And next week, we'll find out if they play it without right. us or not. Because right. um, Portland's under, under uh, a lot of strict guidelines, as is the state of Oregon. So, um, you know, a lot of things have been related to travel. I would say a lot of things too. a lot of our, the work, at least in terms of the time that we're having to put in is related to testing and contact tracing in terms of what the results of those tests are. And I think we're seeing that with the NFL. And you mentioned that some of the FBS games that have been going on around the country that have been canceled. I think last week over 20, or maybe it's even up to 25% of the games got canceled. Um, so we're seeing this nationwide uptick and, you know, here at Cal Poly, we're just trying to figure out what that means for us. Um, and, and we've had positives. I mean, we're, we've had positive tests within our department, uh, no staff, but with our student athletes, and we've had to shut down what we call pods uh, from practice and then ultimately led to us having to cease football practice and, and a few other sports as well. 
hoping that it's just very temporary and we can get back to it very, very soon. So for a lot of our sports, we've opted to, to, to not practice anymore, except for those that are going into their seasons, like a basketball, men's and women's basketball, wrestling, swimming and diving. Uh, they're going to be here all throughout break. Baseball, I can, I can, I'm watching our baseball team scrimmage right now through the windows. Uh, it's my understanding this is going to be their last workout for 40 days until we get back from Christmas. So, you know, we're trying to follow the guidelines the best we can while keeping our guys in shape, uh, keeping our students sharp and ready for it when the time comes. And uh, hopefully the spring schedules get to come off uh, without a hitch. But there's a every morning I wake up, Chris, and look at my email, take a deep breath, open it, just wondering what's going to come across in terms of a new – uh, a new guideline, a new requirement, or new new numbers in terms of what what uh, the positive rates are in our community. Don Oberhelman joining us here on the Mustang Insider, presented by Cal Portland. He is the director of athletics at Cal Poly, and I don't want to overwhelm you with pandemic talk here. And I think we've all kind of we we're all kind of. Uh, we, we want to continue to take the precautions. Uh, it, I don't mean for this to come off the wrong way, but we want to we want to talk about our sports, right? We want to talk about the X's and O's. We want to get back to talking about the wins and losses. And so we've had some preseason polls come out for basketball and whatnot. And, and here we are inside of a week until the official start. Thanksgiving Eve will be the official start. I know the women are scheduled to play uh, up at Stanford, and I know they have uh, high expectations this year. The men's team will open at home against uh, Bethesda coming up from Southern California on Friday inside the Mod Athletic Center. Do you get the sense that uh, even with the, the uptick in, in cases that we're just going to try and, and work around it as much as we can? I, I think a lot of sports fans are skeptical that we might have a, a Rudy Gobert situation again back in March where it's a big domino and then everything kind of shuts off. I, I don't. I hope we don't ever have to go through another – four or five month period like that where we're without sports it seems like we got the testing and the technology we got a vaccine on the way but is 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 there any avenue an unfortunate avenue it would be where you might have to to shut down athletics completely for a while or are we just going to try and roll through and, and and you know take the punches as they come well my preference would be to take the punches as they come and and let's power through this the best we can um that that is not going to be my decision and, and it's really not going to be president armstrong's decision i think those are going to be made by the governor and others um you know but but i i do think you know we we all know the climate our, our communities are in right now i think everybody's pretty exhausted with this whole thing and wanting to get back to life as normal um the rates in our county are still pretty good comparatively you know i realize they've gone up uh rates on our campus have gone up not as much as they have at other places but Certainly, it's something we got to deal with. Um, I will say this about about basketball, though, and that is, I I do sense that the NCA will power through no matter what, uh, barring some outlier kind of circumstance or numbers coming up, because honestly, financially, they just can't afford to not have a NCA basketball tournament. Oh, there will be. There's no question. There's there's, there's got to be. So <laughs> yeah. it might be in June, and it might be 16 teams. I don't know. Uh, they've already said that they're going to bubble in uh, Indianapolis for all 60, uh, 68 teams that make the NCAA tournament. Um, not sure how that's going to work with the airport issues and other things, uh, getting people in and out, hotels, everything else. Uh, but they seem to think they've got a grasp of it. Um, they just financially can't do it. So I'll give you an example. Uh, for Cal Poly alone last year with uh, not having an NCAA basketball tournament, cost us a million dollars. That was just little count. That's our little share uh, of it. And we're one university of 360 that have, have uh, uh, men's basketball. So at the, at the division one level, so it's important. And for a school like Kentucky, where they're getting revenue shares from prior tournaments, we're only getting revenue share from one prior tournament. They may be getting it from, from seven. Um, you know, that's tens of millions of dollars for them. So um, they're going to make sure I, I, I really do. I think they're going to make sure, uh, that there's a, at least a men's basketball tournament, which to me means from an equity standpoint, you're going to be forced to have a women's basketball tournament as well. How you do all that in Indianapolis, I don't know. Right. Um, but I think they're going to play basketball, and I think we're, we're going to try to as, as, as long as they let us. They did put a requirement of 13 games. You have to play a minimum of 13 games to be eligible. Right. Um, I think that's doable. 
for us um, because of how the schedule's worked out where you're playing twice on the road back to back uh, or at home back to back against the same opponent. If you get to play the first game, you're going to get to play the second game. Uh, most likely, I'd say it would be very extreme right. circumstance right. if you don't. Um, so you're kind of doubling down on your chances of being able to play those games in a way. So it'll be it'll be very very interesting. But I, I think basketball is obviously going to be the NCAA priority. I'd never say it's the priority here. Uh, I would not prioritize basketball over softball or baseball or tennis. Uh, but from the revenue standpoint, I, you kind of got to understand why the NCAA is thinking the way they are. It makes sense, and that's why so many conferences and, and teams uh, found a way to play here this fall. And as it wound up being, every FBS conference is going right now, whether they've run into a lot of issues or not. That, that kind of just depends on uh, where they're located. But uh, certainly, uh, you, you can't hold the to your point. You can't hold the NCAA back, uh, and without March Madness for back-to-back -back years. Hey, you're in that new beautiful Dignity Health baseball clubhouse, uh, and and I know. And I wish you could give us a, a tour and, and take us around with you right now. But, but uh, you know, I mean, who knows when we're going to be able to get fans back uh, at Baggett, uh, whether that'll be at some point next season or maybe even uh, the year after. But uh, what are your impressions of that? I know it took a long time to get done, but, I mean, well worth the wait, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's like uh, being promised a Ferrari. <laughs> Uh, then that Ferrari being delivered uh, six months too late, you can't be disappointed in that Ferrari. The nope. Ferrari is still awesome. So you're, uh, you're boiling there for those six months, but the, the day <laughs> it comes. <laughs> yeah, I was I was not happy for quite some time over this project with uh, just the, the massive delays and problems and, and issues with code and other things. And and uh, Vista Grande on campus, everybody knows the huge dining complex. They had the exact same issues. So um I, I feel comfortable about our campus and everything we did to get this thing going, but man, I'm telling you, we, we did a tour. We had uh, one of our supporters uh, in here today who helped uh, baseball alumni who helped, you know, contribute to the project and it was his first time seeing it. So we masked up with his family and, and uh, took a quick tour of it. And it was just amazing to see him just almost in shock at how amazing this facility is. When he walked in the locker room, he's, he's, we, have, we have this just gi giant lit Cal Poly logo in the ceiling. It's probably 16 feet across. And he looked up at that thing and was like, holy moly. You could see even through his mask, his, his mouth just going uh, <laughs> agape at it. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's really going to be a game changer, I think, for us. Um, I, I think we were uh, a perennial top 50 type program. Uh, you know, we've had some top 25 campaigns for sure, but certainly top 50, no question, firmly entrenched. This is going to help us take that next step to being a uh, uh, perennial top 25 baseball program. Um, you know, we finished second in the Big West Conference for a number of years uh, consecutively to our great frustration. Um, I think this is going to help us with recruiting and I think it's going to help us with the development. Um, of our players and our talent because they're going to be here all the time. Who would want to leave this place? I mean, this is, this is a space that they get to come in and study and eat in, and it is just uh, phenomenal. The views of Bishops and uh, Madonna, High School Hill, you can see the, see the, the Block P up on the hillside from here. Um, the locker room's just tremendous. Training room, sports medicine downstairs is tremendous. I mean, it, this thing is top notch. Um, I would put this this is better than anything any university in the state of California has. Uh, I, I would argue on the West Coast as well, um, and maybe even west of the Mississippi. It's, uh, it's just phenomenal. It's sparkling, and I can't wait for people to come, come in and look at it. Um, uh, we had some, our, one of our guests today told us that it, it, it's not as inspiring on the outside as it is on the inside that it's, it looks a little unassuming on the outside, and then you walk in, you see how big and beautiful <laughs> it actually is. And I, and I, I kind of thought to myself about it for a second. I said, well, you know, that, that's kind of Cal Poly. We're, we're a little less braggadocious. You know, our, we, we want, we want uh, uh, function over form, substance over style. And I, and I think that's what you see with this. It, it, it's not going to knock your socks off from the street level when you drive by. It looks like a little one-story building. Then you walk in and you see the ceilings are actually 20 foot tall on the top floor and downstairs houses, everything you could possibly need. It's actually a pretty massive building. It's uh, I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's Cal Poly for you. It's pretty good. I like that. 
Don Oberhelman, Director of Athletics, is our guest here on the Mustang Insider. Uh, Don, you mentioned uh, how beautiful that clubhouse is. Maybe I'll be able to talk you into letting me call a game from there if it's a good vantage <laughs> point, if I, can, if I can get a good view of, uh, of the entire field. Certainly looking forward to being back at Bagot when we do get baseball underway. It was kind of uh, the season along with the other spring sports that got shut down when we all did back in March. Uh, you're going to be playing football this spring. The Big Sky Conference put out the schedule a couple of weeks ago, and you got a couple of home games to start, which which I love. I mean, you get Southern Utah and UC Davis, the rivalry game here, and then you do have to go to Montana in mid-March, and we certainly hope the, the weather will be nice uh, then, and then a couple other road games up in the Pacific Northwest at Eastern and Portland State, and then you got uh, another home game against NAU. So it's a six-game schedule, and they built it out to where if one of the games gets postponed because of the, the virus, that uh, there is a makeup, there's a couple of windows to uh, make up a game or those games. So uh, how, how did that schedule all come together? How did the conference decide upon six games? And uh, th there's reason to be confident that we're going to have an FCS season in the spring and an FCS playoffs, right? I think so. I mean, the, the NCAA moved, moved the playoffs and then we built our schedule around that. Um, there's a lot of discussion with the ADs and head coaches about, are we going to play eight? Are we going to play six? Playing 11 or 12 was never on the table for anybody uh, just because of the sheer amount volume of games played in the same calendar year. Right. Um, at some point, particularly for, for, for postseason teams, you could play 24, 25, 26 games in a single calendar year. And that's uh, decided that that was not in the best interest of our student athletes. So uh, surprisingly, the coaches were the ones that were really pushing for six. You would think they'd be pushing for more, but uh, they weren't. And Bo, Bo Baldwin was one of those that thought six made the most sense. Um, and, and I like how we did the schedule as well. I think it was pretty smart on the conference's part in trying to get uh, bus rides as much as we could for our teams and try to limit travel. So we're, so you don't, uh, there's no reason for um, Cal Poly to not play UC Davis and then wind up having to fly, you know, to Idaho State. Right. So, so they tried to regionalize it the best they could. And of course, as big regionally as, as geographically as the big sky is, that's, you're going to have to get on a plane at some point. But they wanted to maximize the bus rides and then make sure you played your rival games. So Idaho has to play Idaho State, Montana, Montana State, et cetera. Um, for us, it we kind of threw a wrinkle into it is Sacramento State's decision to not play football. Uh, that cost us a bus ride, to be honest. That's going to cost us um, you know, a plane trip because that should have been a road trip for us that we just hop on the buses and go up and spend one night. So uh, not their fault, not the conference's fault by any stretch. Uh, Bo and I looked at the schedule. We both kind of shrugged our shoulders and same time kind of like, I like it. I like it. Let's go play. I, I like playing at Montana. Anytime we play Montana, love it. Um, anytime we play UC Davis, love it. So um, I, I think he just wants to play. Uh, we, we had a, I was joking about this the other day with him that uh, as of next week, it will be the one year anniversary of our final game last year uh, in Northern Colorado. It will have been one full complete calendar year since anybody tackled somebody <laughs> in a Cal Poly football uniform. So, um, because we still haven't been able to do that due right. to the, the, the restrictions that we have. So um, we need to be able to do that. So part of the concern that I've got is just making sure our team is prepared physically to play. Um, the weight room issues have also caused us some problems in terms of being, being indoors in a weight room. Uh, the county is, is not allowed that now that we're back in the purple stage. So now we can't lift like we used to. Um, we, we have built an outdoor weight room, which is kind of interesting uh, on court seven of the tennis courts. Uh, we're hoping to be able to utilize that a little bit, at least to get ready. But, you know, until you can block and tackle, I, I don't know how you can play. Right. So if we're not allowed to actually prepare the, it's going to be hard for us. So we're hoping when we come back at the start of the year, we're in a better position, both as a country and then, then, you know, our County. Um, Cause we, we need to start working out for that, that game on, I think it's February 27th, our opener. Um, we need all of the time we can get because we missed so much time this past year um, in terms of our prep preparation on the good side. One of the things coach Baldwin has said about football is one, he loves the fact when he tells his football players something, they get it right off the bat first time and uh, coaching student athletes like that is just a, a, a blessing and they've, they've appreciated that. And they've been able to do so much teaching via Zoom, you know, these face-to-face -face conversations that will have film going off on the, 
uh, on the big screen and they're able to see each other um, um, through these meetings and watch and learn and teach. And so from that standpoint, this has been pretty good. Um, you hope that time like this is a benefit towards those that are, are mentally strong and can better prepare themselves uh, from the neck up. And I think certainly that's in Cal Poly's wheelhouse. John Oberhillman, our guest here on the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. The last thing for you, and uh, if, if all of this happens after the new year, it means that we're in a pretty good spot. And by we're, I don't just mean Cal Poly, I mean the state, uh, probably the country. You're scheduled to have a period of time where you could very well have both basketball programs, uh, both soccer programs, uh, volleyball program, baseball, football, <laughs> more going on at the same time. Uh, what might that look like? And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine that, uh, you know, we're just going to flip a switch and fans will be let back in. But uh, what, what, can we, what can we tell the fans in regards to, to what we might be seeing shortly after the start of 2021? Well, here's what I'm hoping. Um, we've been told, at least for the foreseeable future, that fans, uh, we won't be allowed to have fans in person. Um, I think that's reasonable. We hope that that changes at some point, maybe April, March, um, somewhere in there where maybe we can all enjoy Krukos and baseball games in the sunshine again. But until that time, what, what is going to happen is you're going to go from uh, no Cal Poly sports to three or four things every day. Um, we, we were looking at the calendar. There's a little time period in March where we will have 21 Cal Poly sports all participating at the same time. Um, how, how we pull that off is still a bit of a mystery to all of us other than um, we're smart people, we're hardworking people. We know we can figure out that if we have, uh, if we're hosting 10 events on our campus on the same day, that is un, un, unheard of, uh, having 10 different sports playing at home at the same time, or on, at least on the same day. Uh, one, we'll schedule it to, to the best that we can. We may have tennis starting at 9 a.m. and softball starting at 7 p.m. Uh, just to try to stagger it out, but it's gonna be some long days for our people. Uh, how sports medicine covers it all is, is kind of one of the biggest concerns that I've got uh, and that we don't have 10 full-time people to cover every single sport if they're going on at the same time. So uh, it's gonna be a challenge, but you know, we're learn by doing. We'll, we're, we're gonna have to find a way to figure out as a staff, um, guys like myself and, and Nick Pettit, our deputy AD, we're gonna become event managers. You might see us on uh, a live stream of baseball, you know, bringing balls out to the umpire. I have no idea, uh, but I know we're all going to pitch in and figure out how we can pull this off. Um, and, and our staff's pretty excited about actually doing it. We've, we've been wanting this for a while. And, you know, now that it's finally hopefully coming upon us, um, you know, you're, you're kind of seeing us do this. We're shrugging our shoulders, go, let's go. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's oh, yeah. get this done. So I told them, I told the staff uh, this week, get rest this week. Um, try to be not in the office as much, uh, the week of Thanksgiving, if you can avoid it, stay home, be with your family because the work's going to hit us hard and fast and furious shortly. So, um, get in your time at home as best you can. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a, a very special moment when that women's basketball hope, game hopefully tips off at Stanford on the 25th. I know it's a, an early morning game up, up North against a really good program, but, uh, that'll signify the return and the long awaited, long anticipated return of Cal Poly athletics. And I know you are chomping at the bit and uh, we all are to, to get our Mustang athletics back and we appreciate your time. Have a, a happy, happy Thanksgiving if we don't connect before then. And if you do get a chance to see me at the uh, men's basketball opener, I'd, I'd love one of those pins. I love we, those pins. We will take care of that. Okay, sweet. Thanks, Thanks. so much for your time, Don. Thanks, Chris. As always, we'd like to thank our partners for making another edition of the Mustang Insider podcast presented by Cal Portland Possible. I want to give fans the opportunity to participate in the fan exam. Do you have what it takes to ace the fan exam? Play the new live college sports trivia game presented by Captain Bill Subs. Good stuff there. And hosted by Mike Golick twice a week now through December 17th. So you still got plenty of time. Put your knowledge to the test for the chance to win some great prizes. Sign up to play now at gopoly.com slash the fan exam. We'd also like to thank our friends at American Riviera Bank. They are a proud sponsor of Cal Poly Mustang Athletics. 
You can open a Cal Poly Mustang checking account today, and American Riviera Bank will donate $150 to support student athletes. This interest-bearing checking account includes unlimited ATM surcharge refunds, plus an exclusive Cal Poly Mustang debit card, Cal Poly checks. Visit ARB.com, uh, ARB.bank, rather, slash Mustangs for more information. That's ARB.bank slash Mustangs. You can get this uh, sweet. Well, you can't see it. Well, there you can. A little bit there. It's uh, the awesome Mustang debit card. All right. We'll see you next time on the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Cal Poly Sports Network.